Kia Hey, nice to see you again. Would you like to come and meet some friends of mine? You would? Great. So, if you look over here, you'll see my friend's party. Have you got any idea about who might live in that little house? Let's take a look. Here's their front door. As you can see, there's lots of bees coming and going. Can we see if they're up for any visitors? Have a listen. So this kind of fare is called a top bar or a log hive. You might have seen that it was a long shape. So as you can see, some of the hive are up here doing their mahi. Everybody has a job in the hive. There's nurse bee and cleaner bees. And there's guard bees who protect the hive. And then there's the field bees who go out and find the nectar to make the honey. Shall we have a look and see if we can find some honeycombs? So I don't want to disturb them too much, but if you have a little peek down here, you can see them with their honeycombs. That's the nectar that they've brought back processed with enzymes in their tummy and then they put them into the honeycomb and they dehydrate it and cap it off so they've got plenty of kai for winter mind you they're still busy in the garden shall we go and have a look Can you see this? <laughs> it's not a honeybee, it's a bumblebee. They like collecting nectar as well. Hey look, here's one of our friends collecting nectar. They're such amazing creatures and there's such a lot that we can learn from them. I have two bee friends here. This is the honey bee, Apis mellifera, and this is an indigenous bee who lived here before the honey bee came along. So most places in the world, they have an introduced honey bee, but also many indigenous bees as well. We're going to Borneo today where they have their very own kind of honey bee, a wild honey bee. And this story comes from the Duson people. And it all started once upon a time. Once there lived a man whose name was Rakian. And one day, Rakian was out in the forest when all of a sudden, high up in the trees, he heard a buzzing sound. And when he looked up in the trees, there hanging from a branch, was a nest of wild honeybees. Well, Rakian was prepared. He had a basket and he had a knife and he began to climb up that tree. And as he drew closer, he noticed that the bees were an unusual color. They were white. Ooh, Rakian had never seen white honeybees before. He took out his knife and <laughs> He started to cut at the nest when ah! all of a sudden a shriek came from the swarm. Rakian almost fell out of the tree in surprise. He'd never heard a swarm of bees shriek before. Now he knew these were no ordinary bees. No. <laughs> and so he put his knife away and using his bare hands, he took hold of the nest 
and he placed it into his basket and he climbed carefully down the tree and carried the swarm back to his little house. And when he reached his home, he hung the nest in the basket above his bed. And he stood and he listened and he heard the quiet, contented hum of happy bees. That night he slept and the next morning when he woke up, Rakian headed out to the rice fields. And when he returned late in the day, imagine his surprise when he entered his home and there laid before him was his dinner. <laughs> Rakian looked around, but there was no one else in the small house. He ate the food gratefully, but all the time he was wondering who had made him the food. But when he asked his friends and his family, Nobody knew anything about the food. The next day, the same thing happened. And the following day, well, Rakiani enjoyed the meals ready cooked for him when he came home, but his curiosity grew and grew until finally it could no longer be contained. And the next morning, he set off as if he was going to go to the rice fields. But instead he hid behind a tree where he had a good view of his home. And he waited and he watched and he waited and he watched. But nobody came. Well, thought Rakian, your luck runs out eventually, doesn't it? When all of a sudden, the door of his home opened and out stepped the most beautiful woman you can imagine. She had long dark hair that cascaded over her shoulders. Her skin was the color of honey and her eyes sparkled like a bee's wing caught in the sunlight. And she was carrying a gourd as she was heading down to the river to fetch water, probably to make more food. Rakian. He watched her until she disappeared into the forest and then he hurried towards his home and opened the door and stepped inside and the first thing he noticed was it was very quiet in his home. There was none of the familiar buzzing of the bees. Rakian looked to the basket above his bed and he saw that the hive was empty. That woman! She's, she's taken my bees, oh, thought Rakia. And he wondered what he should do when he looked out the window and he saw that she was coming back again. So as quick as quick, he reached up and he took the empty hive and he hid it and he hid himself. And just in time, because right at that moment, the woman returned to the house. And as she opened the door, the first thing she noticed was the hive was gone. And she put down the good, and she began to search around the house, muttering to herself, Where, where has my sarong gone? What has happened to it? Who would come and take it? And as she hunted, who did she discover hiding but Rakian? And Rakian jumped up from his hiding place and said, Who are you? What are you doing in my house? And what have you done with my bees? And instantly she became silent, and not another word would she say. And Rakian said, Well? Are you going to say anything? But no, her lips were tightly shut. And the two of them stood there, staring at each other. It was very awkward like. And so Rakian said, Well, if it's you who's been making me that food, why don't you make me some more? Oh, when has that attitude ever worked for anyone? Well, instantly the woman, her mouth opened and she let fly. Well, what have you done with my sarong? I know you've taken it. What have you done with it? It's mine and it's got all my things in it. Give it back to me. She was so upset, Rakian said, Oh, it's true, I, I have taken your sarong, if that's what you mean by the hive. But I don't want to give it back to you, because I fear if I do, you'll go away and that'll be the end. And the woman, she gave Rakian a knowing look and she said, Well, maybe if you gave it back to me, I would stay. Because my mother and I, we've been talking. And since you have no wife amongst your own people, and I have no husband amongst mine, I thought I could come here and be a wife to you, and you could be a husband to me. Oh, 
lucky and like the idea of that sound. And he went and he fetched the hive and the two of them sat there alongside each other and they promised themselves to each other. There is one thing, Rakian, you must promise me that you will never tell anyone my secret. You must not tell people that I am a bee woman. So, Rakian and Potsy Zukin, for that was her name, Potsy Zukin, they lived happily together. And weeks and months and a year passed, and Potsy Zukin gave birth to a little baby. Oh, they were delighted, as was everyone else in the village, and a great feast was held to celebrate. But at the feast, Rakian had one too many, and he began to boast about his wife. My wife, she's so beautiful. Ah, yes, Rakian, she is. Potsizukin is very beautiful. Oh, and she's very clever. She's a very clever woman. Oh, yes, I'm sure she is. Oh, she's not like other women. Oh, do you say so? No, she's special. Oh, that's, that's nice, Rakian. You know, she really is special. Well, we've actually heard enough about your wife, Rakian. No, she's, she's one of the bee people. Oh, and in his boasting, he'd forgotten all about his promise. And the people, they began to whisper, She's a bee woman. Potsy Zukin, she's a bee woman. <gasps> and soon news got back to Potsy Zukin. And she found out that Rakian had pro broken his promise. First she was mad. And then she was very sad. And when Rakian came home, she said, Rakian, what have you done? You had to keep one promise. And you've broken it now. And everyone in the village knows my secret. And I'll have to leave with that. She turned once again into a swarm of white bees that flew out the window. No! No, said Rakian. I'm sorry, Potsizukin. Please forgive me. Don't go. And he scooped their baby up and he ran after the swarm of bees through the village and into the forest. All the time keeping his eye on the bees as he tripped over the roots and fought his way through branches holding the baby close to him. On and on they went for hours and hours until at last they came to the river. And there on the banks of the river was a great long house, the kind of house that the Dusan people traditionally live in. And the bees disappeared into the small dark doorway. But Arakian just stood there on the banks of the river staring. For well, there was such a mighty hum coming from that house that it went through the earth and vibrated up his legs. Oh. Holding the baby close to him, he went over to the ladder and he climbed up and he squeezed him away through the dark doorway. And as his eyes adjusted to the darkness, he looked up and there hanging from the ceiling were hundreds and thousands of bees like a great cathedral golden with honeycomb and Drakian, he was nearly deafened by the humming of all the bees but he called out potsy zukin are you here i'm so sorry potsy zukin please forgive me and he wandered from room to room calling out her name potsy zukin potsy zukin i'm sorry and when he came to the twelfth room the baby woke up and began to cry. <coughs> and Rakian said, Oh, Potsy Zukin, if you can't forgive me, won't you come back for our baby? And all of a sudden, the white bees were flying about him again. And there was Potsy Zukin standing before him. Rakian, I forgive you. You were foolish. But, here, and she reached out and she took their child. We can't go back to your people because you broke my promise and now they know my secret. You'll have to stay and live amongst my people, the bee people. And so it was. And Potsy Zukin and Rakia and their child and many more children that they had grew up amongst the bee people. Their days were as sweet as honey. Well, as I said before, the bees are great teachers, as are all the animal people. If you could
could choose a type of animal people to go and live with, who would you choose? The bird people? Maybe the fish people? Mm. Or maybe you would choose the butterfly people? Mm. And I wonder what they would have to teach you. And I wonder what you would have to share with them. There's something to imagine. Ka kite. See you next time.